Are you settling? If you marry the person that you are with right now, would that be settling? What does settling even mean to you? How do you know if you are settling? What to do if you are and what to do if you're not? Mm. Okay. So first of all, this is, this is a video for anybody who has wondered, hey, in my current relationship, am I settling? Would I be settling if I was to get married right now? Uh, am I settling? Here's a couple of reasons that people settle. First of all, social pressure. Okay, um, as somebody who has marriage and new babies in the family, I completely can tell you that it is so real that people settle because they're like, hey, well, everyone else is having kids and it doesn't look like it's going too horribly for them. Okay, one of the reasons that people settle and rush themselves into timelines that God did not ordain for them is because of social pressure, okay? Number two, it could be about health. Uh, that's the second reason that women rush themselves into commitment, into commitment, into marriages, into having children, because they think health-wise, hey, my eggs, my eggs are not going to be good anymore, okay? So that's another reason that women rush themselves into settling. Now, we've got to, um, and I need your help with this. Can you please comment and say, what would settling mean for you? How would you know if you are settling, okay? I want you to really think, what does that mean to me? That means that I have the urge to cheat on my partner later after we're married. Does that mean that um, I'm constantly jealous of other people's relationships? Does that mean that other people have things that I don't have in their relationship? How would you know if you're settling, if you were at all? Please, please let me know. What does settling mean for you? Just go ahead and comment. How can we even know if you're settling if we don't know what settling means to you? So does settling mean, hey, I never envy other people's relationship? Does settling mean that I, you know, I did what I thought was best because it looks bad to live with a guy? Please comment and tell me. So a couple of reasons, we talked about social pressure, like, hey, everyone else is having a baby. Let me just drop into my body. I think I was talking with my head, my head's racing because frankly, I did not prepare for this message at all. This message found me. So what does it look like to settle? For me, settling would be worrying that I rushed into something. So what can you do if you're worried about rushing into something? Well you make sure that you take your two years of due diligence. Dr. Laura, my mentor, says that you need two Christmases with somebody. Two birthdays, two Christmases, two Thanksgivings to make a decision about if you really know them or not. One of the dumbest things that we could do is rush the most important decision of our life. I believe that you need two Christmases, two birthdays, two Thanksgivings with somebody to really know them. And you also must have at least one of those with their family because you can't forget that you're marrying into their family. Here's the thing. I said to my best friend once, I said, I just don't want to like, you know, I can't marry Canal just because he's a nice guy. I don't want to settle. This is like a year ago. And when I said that, when I said that, hey, mama love, thank you for the rose. And when I said that to my best friend, she's like, I don't identify with the word settle. I don't even, uh, I, I don't even appreciate when you say that word settle because what does settling even mean? Worst case scenario, you end up as a wife and a mom. How is that settling? Isn't that everything that we want? And so ever since then, I started to look at it differently and I realized, oh, that's totally true. Thank you, mama love. I realized, oh, that's totally true. What do I even mean settling? If I end up as a mom and a wife, if I end up as a mom and a wife, then that's the farthest thing from settling. What is the goal? Is the goal to wait your whole life and see like if I could get a 10 on uh, the physical side? Is the goal to wait my whole life and see if I could get a richer man? Is the goal to wait um, instead of enjoying the man that God has put in front of you right now, is the goal to wait to find somebody hotter, richer, stronger, or worth a better family? Or is the goal to love the one that you're with if they are the reasonable, smart, and loving choice? Ultimately, 
this is what I wanted to explain. Let's say that you win the lottery as a woman. Let's say that you win the lottery, but you went to college and you've been working a corporate job like an eight to five your whole career, and then you win the lottery. Let me ask you this, what feels better? What feels better, making, uh, having made a million dollars yourself, created it, uh, offered service worth a million dollars to the universe and to the people around you who God told you to come here and love, what would feel better, offering services worth a million dollars and earning the million dollars yourself, or option number two, winning the lottery and then having a million dollars? For most of us enlightened women, the answer is that it feels better to earn and deliver my, my dream man. And your dream man is a man who is open to change, crazy about you, and a genuinely good character, high quality, good man. That's your criteria. So what are we waiting for? Because the truth is, is that if you've got a man who makes 100K right now, you could be the one, the business mind, the creative mind, to ask ChatGPT to come up with five ways to monetize your current uh, financial circumstances uh, with passive income. So, for example, I have a client who is dating a farmer and she does not know about his financial wherewithal. However, so this farmer, okay, this farmer though has land, right? He has a farm. So my client comes in and says, and I'm like, well, I wouldn't, I would touch this with a 10 foot pole. What's the point of falling for a guy who can't provide for you? Because we need money in this life. Sorry, that's what it is. I didn't make the rules. We need money. Cash rules everything around us. And she said, well, I'm not as worried about him having money because I know that I already have four different ideas of how he could monetize his farm that he's not even doing. I could put it up for Airbnb. We could host a market. We could host uh, horseback riding lessons, right? And she had already ordained and thought by the grace of God of four different ways, you know, horseback riding lessons, um, Airbnb, having it be like a tour guide destination. My client had already thought of four different ways that she could monetize this man's farm. So then she can actually see him clearly and interview him clearly without having to think about money because she knows that somehow she has the business acumen. We all have the business acumen, thanks to Chad GPT. To have an expert, being the AI, to have an expert tell us how to create passive income in our lives. So she has a guy who she likes and she doesn't have to focus too much, like over focus, hyper focus on the money thing because she already has her own creative ideas on how he could monetize that if they were to get married. So now it levels out the playing field, right? So my question for you is, do you want to keep waiting on God's timing? and be in the, it's just a, such a passive role. I don't wanna be in a passive role in my life. I wanna be the shot caller and the decision maker. And I only say that because I pray and I seek God and he's involved in my decisions. But I don't want to just wait the rest of my life for the perfect man who's richer than my ex, smarter than my ex, stronger than my ex. I want to be the one who chooses somebody and loves them because I believe that's the union that God's going to bless and prosper. I think that there's three dating styles. You can take this quiz through Logan Yuri. She is the director of research at Hinge Labs. She's a fellow dating coach. Her name is Logan Yuri, and you can take her quiz and it tells you if you're a romanticizer or a maximizer and the maximizers, they will spend their entire life searching for the next best thing. And I just don't want you to make the mistake that I made where frankly, I could have chosen, I could have confidently chosen to love Canal wholeheartedly love the man in front of me that God has put there, as Grant Cardone says, love the one you're with. I could have chosen that confidently two years ago, 
but instead I was busy being a maximizer. And apparently, Canal told me that all of his friends also say that he's too picky and that he took the test as well and he's also a maximizer. I just don't want you ladies to lose years of your life where you could have been planning with your future partner and you could have been intentionally dating. I don't want you to ever treat somebody again like they are a placeholder. Nobody is a placeholder. Every man that you're dating is a man that you can learn from and you can learn with. And that is your karmic duty. To learn on the man in front of you, learn with the man in front of you. This is your karmic duty. It's not to treat men like they are placeholders because the right woman could make any placeholder man her game changer. Okay, we know this. We create our realities. We are the ones who know what we want. And then men are the ones who fill in the blanks. Okay, so basically all men, including your husband, is going to be a placeholder because we women have the vision. So many men will tell you, oh, I don't want to get married and I don't want to have kids. Don't believe them. Never believe them. Never try to change a man. But guess what? When you are the type of man that a man wants to make a mother... That's more important, by the way, than who he wants to be his wife. It's who does he want to be the mother of his children. Please like and share and subscribe if this has helped you. This is just something that God put on my heart. It wasn't really prepared, but you are treating a man like he's your placeholder when God sent him here for you to learn on. And if you can't appreciate the man in front of you and learn from the man in front of you and love, open your heart to open your heart to the man in front of you, then do you really think that God is going to give you your husband if you can't even notice your husband? And that's what I think about Canel. I don't believe in when they say, like, when you know, you know. I'm such a uh, cynical, analytical person that I wouldn't have even known if my husband showed up and it, we'd been married for 20 years. I was too busy thinking the grass is always greener on the other side. Let me wait for a richer guy, a fitter guy. A guy whose family actually embraces me and makes me feel loved. Something that I want so deeply. <laughs> you can't keep waiting for perfect because there's no such thing as perfect. There's no perfect man out there. There's somebody who's perfect for you. And that's for me, it's somebody who rolls with my bipolar mood swings. It's somebody who uh, can be sensitive to the fact that I'm OCD clean and that I need the house to stay clean and the fact that I want to control my environment so much uh, by keeping it clean and temperature controlled and always feeling clean and always feeling cold, right? I need somebody who can understand that, oh, this is just her daddy wound coming out and it has nothing to do with me. I need somebody who sees me like Canal sees me, which the thing that he said that he saw me as when he walked, not, not to be a damsel in distress, but the night that we met, when Canal came up to me, he said, I just had to come over to you because you looked like a little lamb that needed to be held, an L-A-M-B. <laughs> and he said that my nose, my pointy, sharp nose, reminded him of his grandfather. And so something that I spent so many years of my life not liking about myself, my nose, ended up being somebody who potentially attracted my future husband. I want you to think of the message of, would I feel better if I made a thousand, a million dollars, intentionally created it, I chose the million dollars, I intended for it, and then I worked for it and I made it happen? Or would you rather be the person who ended up, they waited and then they ended up with a million dollars and they have no intention for it, no idea what to do for it, and they don't love themselves anymore because they didn't become the person they needed to be who would have been able to earn it and put those services, a million dollars worth of services out into the world and deliver for God's people. So I want you to ask yourself, would you rather be the person who, oh, it just happened when it happened and it happens when you're not looking and it happens when you least expect it and I don't know, I just... I just fell in love. Do you want falling in love the, with your husband, hopefully? Do you want picking your husband the biggest decision of your life because it determines your children's lives and your legacy, as well as your financial legacy and your impact in the world, your impact in the community, your impact in your own family? Do you really want the most important thing that you do in your life, such as picking your husband, 
to be, hey freckled Theron, do you really want that decision to be something that just happens to you? Or do you want to be the one who chooses it? Do you want to be the one who says, I am choosing to love the man in front of me because he was brought to me by God. My life path brought me to him. There's no, oh, I need somebody richer, fitter. I need somebody whose family is actually going to be nice to me and care about me and understand what we're doing here. Do you want to spend your whole life waiting and wishing? Because that's what I don't want for you, to be in the waiting mode. That's the worst energy to be in. Hey, Freckled Theron, how are you? Do you want to be in waiting mode and waiting energy and then blaming it on, oh, I'm waiting on God's timing? Because guess what? I have many clients who are 37 freezing their eggs and don't have a relationship that they want. And they say, well, I don't want to settle. Settling would be the worst case scenario at this point. Settling means that you're a mom and a wife, which is exactly what you wanted. There's no settling if you end up married a mom and a wife to a man who loves you, is a genuinely good guy, is open to change, and is crazy about you. There's no settling in that. It's three criteria. He's a genuinely good guy with good character. He's crazy about you and he's open to change. How is that settling? Stop being a maximizer. And if you're a maximizer, please take the quiz. I'll link it in the description in a minute. I know this is live. This is a message that God just put on my heart to share. This is something that I also had to learn. I was being a maximizer. Oh, I want somebody better. I want someone better. I want someone better. The next guy's going to be better. Guess what? I literally have dated a doctor who was a bodybuilder who wasn't half as fulfilling as this relationship that I'm in right now, where we're both struggling with our weight and we're both struggling to find a career that we have purpose in. Tam Tamara Huff says, that's so me. Yeah, it's a certain type of woman. We have a profile, just like they have secure attachment, anxious attachment, avoidant attachment. Um, by the way, I'm a disorganized attachment, which is very rare comes from, it's kind of like complex PTSD. So there's attachment styles and there's also a quiz, a dating quiz by Logan Yuri, U-R-Y. And Tamara, I guarantee that just like me, you're a maximizer, which means that you're always looking for the next best thing. This is so toxic in so many ways. This is the opposite of gratitude. This is the opposite of openness and embracing the person in front of you. As my mentor, Grant Cardone says, in every sale, love the one that you're with. Don't be thinking about other customers that you could be calling when you're sitting there trying to do a deal with a prospect. Love the one that you're with. Please look up this quiz. Just type dating style quiz by Logan Yuri. I will link it in the description if you wanna come back. And you find out if you're a maximizer or a romanticizer. There's three different types, but if you're a maximizer, this message is for you to embrace and love the one that you're with. Because love is a decision. And I'll leave you with this. <sighs> love is not a noun. It's not a person, place, or a thing. Love is a verb. Love is something that we do. It's an action. It's a choice. It's a choice every single day. Love is not a noun. It's not a person, place, or a thing. It's a verb. Love is a verb. So wouldn't you want, instead of ending up randomly after waiting for years in waiting energy, wouldn't, and, and, and it's, it's expensive to be single, by the way, and not co-creating something with a life partner. Would you rather all of a sudden end up a millionaire one day? Or would you rather have taken the time, been intentional, been thoughtful, prayed about it, loved every person that you encounter, and then in a year you're a millionaire and you earned it and you added value and you touched people's lives in that? Or would you rather be the person who it just happens to? I don't want to be a person where falling in love with my husband or choosing to love my husband or choosing to love the man in front of me and learn together. I don't want to end up in a situation where it just happens to me. I want to be the one who chooses it. The wise women of today choose it. That's all. Back to you in